So now I'd like to go into each condition in a little more detail. And I'm going to start with dry eyes because it's one of the most common conditions that I see every day. So as you can see, our tear film is made up of three different parts. We have mucus, water, and oil. We have goblet cells that secrete mucus. We have lacrimal glands that make water. And we have these oil glands called mybobian glands in the eyelids. And they pump out oil every time we blink. And this is what keeps our tears from evaporating. Now our tear film is meant to stay in place for about 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, those tears will start to break up. And that's when we automatically blink like a windshield. And this helps to reestablish those beautiful three layers. And it helps us maintain this clear and comfortable vision. So dry eyes will occur when one or all of these layers are disrupted. And if the ocular surface is no longer nourished the way it's supposed to be. So the tears can break up too quickly, either because the oil glands are clogged and they can't release enough of that healthy oil or the lacrimal glands are not making enough water, or those goblet cells are making either too much mucus or not enough mucus. So when dry eyes occur, people start to complain of this redness or tearing. They're really irritated. They feel scratchy. They feel pain. Their vision can be blurry throughout the day. And sometimes they can even get these headaches, which is referred pain. So when the cornea is exposed to air from a poor tear film, those nerve endings can fire and create pain that creates headaches. And then some people also complain of light sensitivity as well. So under the microscope, it can look something like this. Um, we use this yellow dye called fluorescein, and this yellow dye will glow under a cobalt blue light. So the yellow dye will stain all of those surface cells that are damaged or dehydrated. So the areas that are glowing are actually dried out. And you can see these diffuse spots that are glowing on the cornea and also some areas on the white part of the eye that are glowing, and that's on the conjunctiva, and those cells are glowing due to dryness. So while there may be other causes of dry eyes, I'm only going to concentrate on the quantum causes. So first is poor circadian rhythm. So remember when, that, that we chronically, when we chronically miss that morning sunshine and sunshine throughout the day, we just don't have the proper hormones or the proper energy that we need to really stay healthy and hydrated. And remember that the eyes are a hormone making organ and we have those UVA receptors called neuropsin. They're actually on the cornea. So in other words, we need some UVA light to be absorbed, as I explained earlier, as I explained earlier, to make hormones and energy for our body through our eyes. And without that UVA and full spectrum sunlight, this can lead to different health issues like hormonal dysfunction. Now, hormonal dysfunctions play a really large role in how our glands function, including the oil glands in our lids, the glands that make water, and those goblet cells that secrete mucus. And those, those, all those cells have clock genes, and they require proper timing and proper hormonal signals to work well. And also, poor circadian rhythm can contribute to that long list of health issues like diabetes and cardiovascular disease and autoimmune issues. Now, these conditions will ultimately lead to inflammation and prescription medications. Now, most, if not all, prescriptions can disrupt the tear film in some way, and many have dry eyes as a side effect. Now, inflammation from those health issues is also linked to dry eyes and results in this poor water production from those lacrimal glands. Now, poor circadian rhythm will also contribute to low melatonin and poor sleep quality. So if we don't sleep, our tear film cannot be replenished. So I'm sure you've noticed how dry and heavy the eyes feel if you get a really bad night of sleep or if someone wakes you up in the middle of the night. Now, next is blue light toxicity. So again, when we're exposed to blue light all day, it can also contribute to dry eyes. So remember that artificial blue light when it's unbalanced by red is oxidizing and damaging. Now this dehydrates our bodies and it messes with our mitochondria and the cornea is full of collagen. And remember that collagen needs to be hydrated in order to function properly. So dehydrated collagen will lead to cells that are damaged. And when cells are dehydrated due to blue light and Wi-Fi signals and this poor mitochondrial function and a lack of red and infrared light, not only does our collagen get dehydrated, but our lymph flow is also affected. And our lymph flow can be adversely affected and actually get stagnant. Now the conjunctiva requires good lymph flow to get rid of these toxins that build up. 
So if lymph flow is stagnant, the eyes are irritated and they get full of toxins. Now, there are also vitamin D receptors and melatonin receptors in nearly every part of the eye, including our cornea, our conjunctiva, and our lids. Now, low vitamin D levels will contribute to the poor functioning of those cells, as do low melatonin levels. Now, there's also a microbiome in our eyes, just like we have good bacteria in our guts and on our skin. So we require that good circadian rhythm and this healthy immune system and full spectrum light to maintain this adequate microbiome. Now, overall, our eyes require mitochondria to function well, right? So mitochondria cells are found in all parts of the eye. And when mitochondrial cells get damaged, the optimal functioning of those cells goes down. Now, it's just a side note on photophobia. I'm noticing that more and more people are super sensitive to light. Now, this is also a function of blue light toxicity. So when the eyes are cooked by artificial light all night and day, there's this constant signal going to the brain that affects our pupil. So our pupil can no longer respond to light the way it's supposed to. And this has to do with too much stimulation of that sympathetic or that fight or flight pathway in the brain. And that's what controls the pupil's response to light. So the pupil, due to the stress, it, it can no longer constrict or it doesn't close well enough when the light hits it. And as a result, sunlight is really bothersome. So we need that pupil to control the amount of light or sunshine that we get. And that's why when we dilate eyes during an eye exam, the sun hurts because there's this excess glare because the eyes can no longer constrict.